Hi guys! Uh, today I'm going to paint a mantic zombie because I want to teach you how to paint this uh, zombie flesh. Also, many people have requested a tutorial about uh, with, a, with a mantic figure in it and, you know, it is nice. The uh, mantic min miniatures are usually a little soft to my taste, but they're cheap and the zombies turned out actually really well. So, this is the mini we'll be working on. There. See? This chap always ready to lend a hand. Just my little joke. So, what colors will we use? Will we, we will use, of course, a staple of rotting flesh. The color rotting flesh from, from Vallejo. I think you will find it in the Games Workshop range as well. We will also use some of this um, great coat grey because uh, fr from P3. I like it because it's a, it's a kind of a neutral grey but it also has a little tinge of blue and it's very interesting to do zombies with little blue in it as if they're you know cyanosed slightly decomposing you know that, that sort of thing <coughs> of course you could also um, you could also use brown but you know I like my zombies a little less fresh so to speak Here, these are the colors I'm going to use, and see how I how they mix very well together. This greenish white, and then this off gray. So this should be fairly easy. Let's start. With a mix of both colors. We're going to wash it a bit with that as per a base coat. We are not really concerned about the regularity of the mix at this point because zombie flesh is you know zombie flesh we will try to get the the clearer color on top but that's it so the mix is about 50 50 gray great coat gray and rotting flesh for now ish We're painting all of it. I know there's a little bit of the brain sticking out and lots of blood and gore detail. We'll do those perhaps in another tutorial. I'm just trying to guide you on how to do that zombie flesh for now. Actually, we'll paint the hand inside his hand the same base color. Although it should probably be a little fresher, we will see about that at a later point. Because, you see, you can do all kinds of, of, of flesh tones for a zombie. You can do it uh, almost uh, flesh colored. If the zombie is really, really fresh, it was just, it, it just died and then it was just made, so to speak. And, uh, or you can do it very brown and withered and dried up like a mummy and that would be fine as well you 
could do it bloated and gray and bluish, uh, like it died of cold or exsanguination. Or maybe even drowning. I haven't seen any drowned zombie yet. A drowned corpse is very bloated. This is extremely gruesome. Hmm. I may ask Warren about putting up this tutorial in the uh, not suitable for young children part of the website. Well, maybe not. That's it for the base coat. As you can see, you can still see the priming coat underneath. It's still quite apparent in many places. Now I'm going to do a, a wash, simple wash of the grey colour. Only in the dark places. Well, the dark places for a zombie. <laughs> Very funny. But yes, only in the recesses and uh, underneath where, where the zombie, the, where the flesh isn't supposed to be that well lit. It's only a slight wash, not, not going to be fancy here. Again, regularity. Pretty much not a, not a zombie staple. There. Now we're going to have a uh, little more rotting flesh. We're going to have uh, maybe two thirds rotting flesh. Oopsie. Two thirds rotting flesh and one third grey for our zombie highlighting. Here on top of the head, here highlighting the face a little. shoulders see on his knee that slit let's blend it a little here blend it a little more at least with what's underneath You could probably get away with a dry brush, but that's just not my way. Yeah, probably need some more highlight, maybe a bit on his chest, just to show he's got one. I'm going now to I'm now going to use pure rotting flesh to highlight the very lightest of places. Perhaps with a No, no, no need to use a finer brush. This is a zombie. This isn't exactly precision work. It could be, but I like the effect, uh, this little somewhat random effect that large brush strokes may have on a zombie's flesh. As you can see, that's been pretty much highlighted. Perhaps we need a little more light here.
more light. Mere Licht, as Goethe would say. And now, because zombies, um, they're all a little cruddy, they're all a little brownish, they're all a little dead, pretty much. He's going to have some dried blood here and there. So this is Royal Navy Brown, which is the perfect color for quick and easy dried blood. I'm going to take a number zero brush. I'm going to do some washes here and there in strategic places that will enhance our zombie. For example, here in the eye sockets. Here under the nose and in the mouth. In its ears. There, he has little holes and pock marks and things that are and have somehow decomposed underneath his torso. Intestines dripping out. There's here on his back. There's flesh that has, the skin has been completely stripped off in some places. Probably going to have to wash it here as well. Here. His brain's out. Here you have uh, some muscle fibers, and I think we're going to have to wash this here, this hand in Royal Navy Brown a, a little, because he's been dipping his hands into something that's not quite clean. Same thing here. This is a lovely muscle fiber. Happy little zombies. Of course, one of the staple of zombie flesh is that they have intestines and brains and uh, organs uh, all over the place. So we're going to have to do that in... Yes, we're going to do a little ivory and... Yes, we're going to do a little pink. That's old rose. I like that color. I'm going to put it here on my palette to show you. This is old rose. And this bit here is ivory. Yes, we're going to use old rose to paint a zombie. <laughs> His intestines are slipping out. They should be painted pink. Or at least pinkish. There. There he's got some organs and flesh that should be at least pinkish here. A little bit. Just a tad. His brain is certainly going to be pink, because brains are pink. Well, actually this one should be yellowish, because 
it's been somewhat conserved. I'm also going to use a little old rose mixed with grey. Great good grey we used earlier to paint that hand, which will be in a to highlight that hand really rather. It will be a, in a different flesh tone than the rest of the zombie because it's not his hand and also it's a bit fresher in my opinion. So you know that will teach you how to make a fresher looking corpse. There. Yeah. This is disgusting. But this looks a lot better. Now I'll get one more wash of the Royal Navy Brown on that hand, perhaps. isn't it? And one more wash here for dried blood. Perhaps even, you know, not, not, do, don't, we don't, we don't have to feel limited by any of the areas and holes of the zombies as blood might very well have dripped from every one of his wounds and these are post-mortem wounds so weird bruising and terrifying looking blood and dr fluids dripping you know that's not unusual I'm sure. The more terrible, the better. There. A little bit in his mouth as well. Going to have a little of the old rose mixed in with ivory. That's going to make a fine way to highlight those fingers here, because this hand is all cold and dead and yuck, and so it's a little bit pale, quite obviously. There. All better. And completely dead. See? This is interesting, isn't it? Quick and dirty, so to speak, zombie flesh. <laughs>